Alright everyone, once again, Thursday, new Odyssey, let's see what it is. Okay, it's called Fired Up. Oh boy. Uh, I already know what the last map's gonna be. Which kinda sucks. Pop your way to the infernal depths and claim victory over the balloons. Fired Up Odyssey. Okay, so I suspect the last map is those two fire circles. Yep. Infernal. That one's gonna be tricky. Mace is also going to be tricky, but it seems like everything is just standard and relatively easy. Alternate balloons round up to 70 could be fairly tricky. Um, oh, what am I saying? You go up to 80 all the time. Yeah, nah, that should be fine. All of this looks very pathetically easy. Even... even wait, why, why aren't they giving us the money on Mesa? That's rude. Mesa's the harder one, but I guess you're going up to 90 on Cracked, so... That's fair enough. All right, let's see what we've got to work with, shall we? Whoa, we get quite a lot. Is this uh, an extreme odyssey? No, it's just a regular odyssey. Wow, they are quite generous on hard mode for this one. Uh, still max 16. Oh, there's a bunch of restrictions. This is gonna suck. We're gonna have to figure out exactly what we need. Okay, but we can use any hero that we like. So let's use one that's good on Infernal. Uh, on Infernal, there's not a lot of room. Uh, we're gonna need someone with big range. So I think, maybe even Quincy. Don't get me wrong, I do love Oban. And I usually prefer him over Quincy every time. Maybe even Adora. A little bit pricier, but the abilities and the range upgrade would be pretty nice. You know what, let's try Quincy. More, more people have Quincy, so it'll be more doable for everyone. Right, let's have a look at what upgrades we can get. Dart Monkey seems to be utter trash. Uh, Boomerang Monkey is Moab damage. This boy is Bomb Blitz. Uh, Inferno Ring. Well, I mean, if they didn't choose Inferno Ring for the fifth tier, what, what else would they go with? Um, so that could be Lead Popping Power early game. Ice Monkey, I don't even know what the top pro is. Super Brittle? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that one. Uh, we do have a balloon solver. That's straight up going in my lineup. Because um, that is very solid mid to late game damage. Uh, we do have a stunning sniper. Uh, but very slow fire rate. Don't know if it'll be worth it. Middle path boat could save us quite a bit of trouble in the in certain maps. Do we have water? Let's throw the boat in, but do we have water? Alright, I don't know if you guys caught whiff of that ASMR, but I just had to open up a couple of jars for my mum. Uh, anyway, what were we talking about? Water. So, there is water on firing range. The... I don't believe you can put anything in the pools of acid. Or maybe you can. Yeah, okay, you, yeah, there is water there. There's water there. There is no water on Mesa. 1 to 80. Uh, so maybe not too many water icons, but we do have some on Infernal as well. And having water base towers on that map will be helpful. So we'll definitely get water. Middle path plane. Uh, it's interesting, but I'm not too sure. Patchy Prime without other upgrades. Tempting. Let's just keep going. We've got middle path wizard. That's just pure murder, but no camo detection. Uh, top path Dartling Gunner is just Laser of Doom. Middle path Super Monkey is a joke. Uh, bottom path Ninja is really good, but you really have to put a lot of money into it before it gets there. Bottom path Alchemist is godly if you can get the fifth tier. Not so great every other time before that. And the Druid top path is pretty decent. Um, it's usually better to cross it with the middle or the bottom, but obviously we don't have that luxury. Uh, we, <laughs> banana farms just don't get any love, and we're definitely taking a village because we need to make up for a lot of loose ends. Um, 
Alright, so Spike Factory is also relatively okay, just like the Druid, you know, it'd be best if you could cross path it, but if not, it's still pretty strong if you can get up there with the upgrades. Uh, Engineer Monkey top path is purely sentries, isn't it? So that's kind of okay. Alright, well these, these are my insta picks, straight up. Um, but obviously you can't detect camo, but you can pop leads. You can pop leads, but you can't detect camo. You can help them detect camo, and Quincy can do both. So, I think we need to uh, figure out what can detect camo and what can't, and get a nice balance of each. So I think Spike Factory is just always good if you don't know what to get. You can always just throw it at the end of the track, and considering I'm pretty sure the top path has the uh, white hot spikes. Yeah, yeah, because it goes, it's a bigger spike pile and then it's white hot spikes. So yeah, we can throw that at the end of the track and that can pop anything. Um, then the engineer might be decent damage. I'm just worried about him on infernal, where there's like no space for anything. But the main thing is, do we want to get a ninja for early camo detection? Wait, is the bottom path mortar um, signal flare? I think it might be. Because the middle path is attack faster and get that heavy shell thing. The top path is just damage. So I think bottom path has the signal flare, which could be handy. We'll see about that. We'll see if it... it actually, you know what? I'm just going to look right now. Nope, not there. Do, 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 do. Uh, signal flare. There you go. So we can we can remove camo property, but obviously we can't shoot that fast. So it will help for certain rounds, but um, not necessarily able to rely on that. But it'll help out until we get our camo village up. Bottom path boomerang monkey. We don't have a lot of high Moab damage here. So honestly, it might be a decent idea to grab this. Oh man, honestly, when they give me these options, there's not a lot to pick that I don't cringe at. Uh, I feel like tax shoot is always good, uh, no matter what path, as long as it's up to tier four at least. Oh god, um, wizard. I'm just going off of what I usually pick now, regardless of the upgrades available. And we'll go druid. I think these are the towers I want. I think. There's there's no holes in this strategy though. Because the village can support everything. They can pop leads, he can pop leads, he can pop leads. Uh, none of them can pop camo off the start, but Quincy will build up to that over time. You've got Moab popping power. Uh, you've got Moab popping power. You've got some Moab popping power. Alright, I think... I think this will work okay. We'll get another spike factory as backup. Um, we'll get another boat, because there are multiple boat locations, and especially on Infernal, where we have awkward positioning, uh, a boat would be quite handy in multiple spots. And then maybe another engineer monkey for earlier maps. Then we'll just we'll just throw a couple duplicates on like that. Alright, I think I think we're ready. Let's give this a shot because this is gonna be insane. I... Pff, wow. Those upgrades, man. <laughs> Jeez. Can we put Quincy on here? Oh god, no. Alright. But we do have decent towers. We do have decent towers. Put a spike fact, uh, attack shooter on there. Can't put one of those on there. Can we put an engineer? Nope. Wizard, also too fat. Druid, slightly skinnier? Nope. Um, we don't really want to put Quincy all the way down here. We want to remove that tower and shove him up here. But we cannot afford to do that just yet. So... Attack shooter start? Anyone? Uh, let's go. Let's just see how this goes on its own. 
Wow, actually. <laughs> Damn. Decent. Who'd have thought? <laughs> huh. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, we, we're gonna lose a couple lives here, but... Actually held off the first round. I was surprised at that. Let's, let's give you an upgrade. Cheap one, but still an effective one. This should help you lose less lives. Oh, come on. That was so close. Alright, but this is an interesting odyssey. Why is it called... F I mean, I get why it's called Fired Up, because of the whole Inferno thing. Infernal last map, but... Is there any other reason? Like, Tech Shooter got the uh, Inferno Ring, or the... Is it the Inferno Ring? I think it's the Inferno Ring. But yeah, you got that upgrade, but other than that, is there a real reason behind all of these other... I mean, maybe the bottom path mortar has the burny stuff? Yeah, that's... That's burny fire. Top path glue gunner, though... I guess it burns, because it's corrosive, right? I'm just trying to figure out the uh, hidden agenda behind this map. Or behind this Odyssey, I should say. Alright, a little bit more than we can put Quincy up. Honestly, having those road spikes as well as the mana shield helps out quite a lot. And of course, if you uh, don't want to lose this many lives early on, you don't have to, but I just did it to get Quincy in a very good position. You can of course start with Quincy down here until you can remove this, then you can sell him and rebuy him. But he might lose a few levels that he gained along the way, which kind of sucks, so... I avoided doing that by sacrificing my own lives. You know, you know, just, just casual. Casual stuff, you know. Just, uh... Take out your own health. Alright, we're gonna put up a boat. Because, even if it is just the middle path, Grape Shot is still one of the best upgrades to get as a first tier for any tower whatsoever. Instead of having just one singular shot, you now have six, maybe even more if you've got monkey knowledge. Boom. Instantly makes it way more deadly, which is perfect. I'm surprised we haven't had an Odyssey that uh, restricts our monkey knowledge. I'm waiting on that one. That's like the only way they can really switch things up. Like. They started off switching things up by changing the modifiers, like increasing balloon speed, uh, increasing balloon health, things like that. Then they started switching it up by modifying your upgrades, right? And then they started switching it up even further by adding, adding in custom rounds, or rounds that we're not used to. I'm just waiting for the day where they just go, you know what, no monkey knowledge, good luck. <laughs> bound to happen. Now, the only problem with every single one of these guys is that there's not a lot of camo detection amongst them all. So, we're gonna go for a big mortar. Uh, just for now. We're gonna put him... Let's put him near Quincy, just in case we decide to put the village near him. We're gonna slap this right in the middle. We're gonna go increased accuracy burning stuff, and then eventually signal flare when we can afford it. But essentially we're just trying to hit as many balloons as possible, and they are having to pass by the explosion this way, then that way, then this way, or vice versa. So directly in the middle seems like the most logical place to put it. And we've got leads coming up soon, so that was a great idea. Let's also buff this guy. Let's, let's not leave our tack shooter in the dark here. Wow, did that bomb just miss every single one of those leads? I think it did. Okay, but now we need... So truth be told, we need Moab damage sooner than we need camo coverage. Uh, but Quincy should be a big help for Moab damage, but let's still try and get this uh, Moab press going. We won't be able to get Moab Dom, but Moab Press might just have a shot here. If we can afford it in time. 
Okay, so here's our camo balloons. Quincy excels here. Ooh, I just realized. It might have been a good shout to pick Etienne. So there you go. Any of you guys want to pick Etienne, uh, feel free. Because most of these towers and restrictions excel at popping lead balloons, but not camo. So if you pick Etienne, yeah, he's a weak hero to start off with. But once you get him up to a certain level, you can make them all see camo balloons without needing a village whatsoever. And it's infinite range, so the entire map can see it. They don't have to be near Etienne for it to work. So, big shout out to people that picked Etienne, or people that will now pick Etienne. Uh, but Quincy's not a bad pick either. In fact, I don't think any of them are bad picks unless they just permanently can't detect and pop camo balloons. Like, Adora? Can Adora pop camo balloons? I don't think so. Maybe one of her abilities allows her to, but not from memory, I don't think. Alright, but this is why we need camo detection, just because they're going to start sneaking through and we can't allow that. Get that radar scanner. There we go. Now this guy can see him. This guy can even though he already could. But we can start placing up our glue gunner now. Who's going to be helping out quite a lot. I hope. Oh god, first Moab. How are we looking? Not terrible. I didn't need to use that ability. It came close but I didn't actually need to use it, which is ideal. Okay, and then we've got our balloon solver. Whew, this is going to be a tricky odyssey. Maybe I should have picked more, uh, more map-wide, uh, what do you call it, damage, like planes and, uh, Heli pilots. That might have been a good shout. Oh well, we'll see how we go. If we can beat round 80 on this, then we can beat through pretty much anything. My main goal is to try and get the balloon solver if possible. I know it doesn't give him camo detection anymore, but it used to at one point, but it's still a goddamn good damage dealer. So we're going to try our best to get balloon solver here. If possible. Until then, though, we're just going to have to hope that everything else works out well for us. And this already looks a bit dicey, doesn't it? That's a bit worrying. What could we get to ease that? Um, maybe some lightning? But he can't fit up here, and it's kind of crappy range. Um... I think it's just the map. I feel like our towers would be much more better suited if they had better placement. Uh, but on this map it's very difficult to get better placement than what you are given. But then again it is meant for military monkeys mainly. Thank you Quincy for sponsoring this ass kicking. Um, ooh that's a lot. But we managed it. Nice. Moab Press doing his job. Hell yes. Keep it up. Boom. That was a much easier Moab on us. It's just regular balloons that we struggle with. Okay, some got through. Let's uh, help him out. See, this is, where, this is where the struggles come in, and I don't like struggling. Okay, we're doing fine there. The second we get the balloon solved, this this will all change. It's just if we can get it in time. That's the problem. Because, I mean, look at this. Like, yeah, we're popping them, but not nearly as much as I'd like to be. See, we, we do get through them. It's just scary how close they get. Alright. But we are almost in the range of... Oh, in, in fact, we probably could afford the balloon solver right now. If we need to. Worst comes to worst, we can afford the blue top. I think. Let's slow it down. Ceramics seem to be the bane of our existence at this point. Ok, 
Okay, okay. Let's use Quincy's ability here. Whoa, okay. That's alright. That's not the worst. We lost one life. I'm keeping it at one life. <laughs> We're not losing any more than that. Oh man, this is going to be a tricky one. Can we actually wait this out until we can afford balloons over? I don't think we can. I think... Nope. Okay. Let's try that again, but this time with a balloon solver. So we need what? Three grand? Are you worth three grand? No. Are you? No. What about you? Nope. Hello. Goodbye. Hello. And then hello again. All right. Let's try this again. See if see if something's different. Hmm. <laughs> Seems like we did pretty well this time. That's strange. Wonder what changed. There we go. And then we're slowly getting our lives back into order. And you can see camo, so that doesn't work either. Good luck, loons. There's both of our abilities back, which is lovely, because I was a bit worried about that. And there's our Moab press back. Okay, perfect. So we've got our balloon solver, so round 63 shouldn't be a pain. Oh, hey! It's been a while since that happened. Um, we're going to try and get monkey pirates, and then... Should we try for a pirate lord? I'm not too sure. But I think for the map that we have to go to round 90 on, Cracked, I believe it is, um, we are going to need a monkey pirates. Or a pirate lord, sorry. Because we're going up to round 90. So we're going to need a pirate lord that can see camo balloons to make our lives infinitely easier. Okay. We're managing. We are the manager of this establishment. Honestly, not bad. Now that we've got our balloon solver, our solid backbone of our defense, we're not looking too terribly. I just... Let, let's have a look at 63. Can we actually slaughter this? I assume we can. Ooh! Okay, that was bloody close. Alright, so we might have to be a bit on the ball with uh, Quincy's assistance here. So let's use it now. Everyone knows you don't use Quincy's second ability on until the third wave of 63. Wait for them to meet up in the middle like a cute little uh, couple. And then, boom. Why did that attack there? Either way, doesn't matter. It still wiped out one side so the balloon solver can do the rest. But that is scary because we do know that uh, round 78 also has quite a lot in terms of ceramic balloons. So, we're going to go for another ability. Oh, I saw that we could fit him here. Somewhere. Oh, oh. Hey, there it is. Right, so Wall of Fire, at the very least, has to put it on the track. Uh, Dragon's Breath won't be that useful of an upgrade for us when his range is like this pathetic, but he might be able to hit some Moabs if they come through the middle lane, and we're aiming for the ability Summon Phoenix, because that is quite a strong ability. I'm not going to lie, that saved my butt many times before in this game, especially during Odysseys because I think there was an Odyssey that was all about activating abilities. Summon Phoenix, as well as the boats, have saved my butt more times than I could count in that one Odyssey. So we're going to go for Summon Phoenix. Best case scenario, we win. Worst case scenario, uh, we might have to repick some heroes and... Uh, what do you call it? Monkeys. I think we'll be alright. Just from the looks of things, we're going to be alright. Let's get a 
bring a firearm in here. I feel like in BTD5 I used attack shooters so often, but in BTD6 it's just like attack zone or nothing. You know? Like, there's rarely a time where I would pick a blade maelstrom over attack zone. And I know that's a not not a very fair comparison considering uh, there's plenty of things a played Maelstrom could do that attack zone maybe couldn't. But there's also a lot more things that attack zone could do that Blade Maelstrom definitely couldn't. Like uh, taking out BFB solo or Moab solo. Attack zone would do it with ease. Super Maelstrom, well, Maelstrom would struggle. Super Maelstrom could be a different story. Alright, but we seem to be okay. We've got Alliance Insurance. No sponsor. Just popped into my head somehow. Um, so let's get another Ring of Fire. But yeah, what? Like I said, th that's why I went through all of the... Uh, if you've noticed, I went through all of the monkeys available and all the upgrades they had. And I picked out the ones I knew immediately were going to be super helpful. I.e. the glue, the uh, balloon solver, as well as the boats, and the village. And they're pretty much the main reason we're alive right now. Let's slow this down. How do we feel about this wave? Ah, we feel good. Nice. Alright. Um, why don't we slap some extra damage down? Wow, really? I have to place them this far back? Uh, well, that's kind of pathetic, but hopefully the sentries... Yeah, they've got decent range, and they can place themselves wherever they want. Let's grab those two to make it a bit easier on our team. Our main abilities we're focusing on are the Phoenix as well as Quincy's too. So for the first wave of 78, let's see how we go on ab no abilities. I'm a little bit afraid, but... Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. Honestly could have gone a lot worse. Um. Oh god. Okay. Um, but yeah, for the second wave, even though all these guys can see camo, the boats cannot, so we are going to have to use at least one ability. I think Quincy's second ability will do it nice and easily. Or at least for the most part. And then the glue... glue... Uh, glue gunner can solve the rest. Ha! <laughs> Sol. Uh, love it. Alright. But we'll hook that away. And if there happens to be another, we'll hook that away. And if there happens to be another, we will let it do as it pleases. Because we're nice like that. But then those fortified ones... We don't like them, so we'll hook them away. And then we're on round 80 all of a sudden. So, we can go all out and not really have to care. So, once it gets in the range of Quincy, first ability, Phoenix, and then our hooks come back. Grab a couple of them. Finish it off with everything else. Alright. So, that was beautiful. That was probably one of the trickier maps. I'd say the hardest maps would be this one and these two. Uh, cracked and Carved are very linear, so uh, it's much easier to plan a defense on Cracked and Carved. Mesa is a little bit more tricky, and Infernal is the hardest out of these five, at the very least. Oh, we can start off with a Quincy start and not have to worry about losing any lives. Isn't that nice? All right. So, now that we don't have to worry about placing a bloody, or removing a stupid guard tower, what can we focus on? Quincy will get camo detection before he gets lead popping power, I believe. So we should focus on the leads. Let's go with a buccaneer. Oh, alternate balloons round. I completely forgot. Um... You know what, we'll let that slide. Just because I completely forgot it was alternate balloons around, we'll let that slide. We'll let those red balloons take their victory and slam themselves into the 
spike pile at the end. Uh, but the main key thing here is that we're just going to put down a spike factory to deal with any camo balloons for now. We can't keep this up forever. So we are going to need to get grape shot before round 10, I think, which could be a bit of a struggle, uh, but we'll see. Oh, not grape shot, hot shot, I think the one after it. Uh, but yeah, all these the camo balloons are useless against a spike factory. That's why we put them in. Every time you're not sure that you'll be able to deal with everything appropriately, throw in a spike factory if it's given to you. Even just the base spike factory can pop bloody camos, and then a couple upgrades away you can pop leads. Even better. Don't tell me the lead comes this round, please. Tell me it comes on round 11 and I'm not thinking of the right round. Please? Duh, of course. Alright. Oh, and there's two of them. Um... Let's slow this down. Oh, really? Okay. Let's try that again. There is a way that we can pop this. I think... No, glue gun is the second upgrade, isn't it? Not the first. Uh, none of these can... Well, the mortar can pop leads initially. But nothing else can. Quincy's on his way, I suppose. Um, you know what? We're going to restart. Just because I did not realise it was uh, alternate balloons around until it was too late. That was my bad. Alright, so we've got our Quincy start. We're not going to be ditching that anytime soon. Um, we do need camo detection and lead popping power much sooner than expected. Um... Does it start now, actually? Or is it next round? I think it might be next round. Okay, so what can pop... What bare minimum can pop camo balloons? Spike factory. Easy solve. Easy solve. Expensive, but easy. Um, and then what bare minimum can pop leads? Mortar. Ah, oh, there's my issue. Okay, I was going to say. So, if you... Uh, if you place... If you've got the right monkey knowledge, you can cut down the price of the first military monkey you purchase to about two-thirds of its original cost, which is a pretty pretty massive discount. But if you can't place a mortar straight away like I can because you don't have the right monkey knowledge, boomerang monkeys are also quite cheap and effective in terms of uh, two upgrades and it can pop leads. So there is your solution. If I had... Uh, realize that it was alternate balloons around. I mean, I really should have known, but I just completely forgot about it, but there you go. We can now pop leads, and we can now pop camos, thanks to these two. Uh, now I can place some actual damage, which is what I was trying to do before. Alright. So, yeah, the reason I bought the Monkey Buccaneer was purely for damage with the grape shots and the hot shots, but those are quite expensive. Whereas if we just get a nice little uh, spike factory, as well as our boomerang monkey. It's uh, much more cheap and effective, at least in the early game. All right, but there you go. That's how we're popping that and that. Perfect. Right now we can get some raw damage in here for the grape shot. That'll help us out with regular balloons by a lot. The camo balloons shouldn't be too inv invasive, uh, so I think we'll be able to hold out long enough because Quincy's going to get camo detection soon, uh, like maybe in a couple rounds, one, maybe two rounds, definitely two rounds if not one, um, but yeah, we should be alright after that, bit of a bit of a shaky start, but we restarted and tried it again and we're well on our way. So we're all good. Big shout out to the Spike Factory. Big shout out to EA for putting out so many spikes uh, to help me with the camouflage balloons. And now 
want to do. Cannon ship? Cannon ship seems pretty solid for damage. But we do need to work on getting our main man glue gunner up and running. So we're going to work on our... Oh, geez, what will we work on? We've gone up to only 70, so it's not that crazy. But we're going to put down our village in the middle. Regrow blocker and radar scanner is pretty much all we need, just like last time. So, we're going to get radar scanner. We can pop purples. Purples are fine. They just died up regular sharp projectiles. We've got a few of those. There we go. This could be tricky. I completely forgot about that. Hmm. Um. Okay. So the, the, the spike pile at the end did save us. Quite heavily, actually. Um, but that is a big wake-up call. That we need to protect ourselves from camo leads. And here's how we do it. If you don't have the spike pile, then I would recommend potentially selling the spike factory in order to get the radar scanner in order to afford it because we weren't that shy of uh, affording it it was just uh, we didn't have it lined up in time all right but now we need some more damage as much more damage as we can get so we're going for the glue there we go now we've got a solid camo lead popper right here. Let's put him on strong for now. Just so he prioritizes everything that's trying to whiz past him at 300 miles an hour. Or, you know, if you also just are lazy, you could just upgrade your spike factor instead. Why didn't I think of that first? Huh. Yeah, if, you, if you're very far off of getting the radar scanner, just upgrade your spike factory to at the top. It'll pop camo leads, it'll pop everything. I mean, I can't guarantee that it'll pop a ZOMG, but it has the potential to hurt everything. So, regular balloons, most likely, it will be able to take them out. Especially if you get spike balls. Spike balls are quite nice. Anyway, we're distracting ourselves from actually getting our balloon solver here, damn it. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have done that, but it's alright. Worst case scenario, we can sell some things to get the balloon solver early, if it's... Uh, really big pain. It shouldn't be. We should be alright. All these camo balloons will make it a bit more difficult, but the fact that it's not all rushing the uh, the spike factor at the back there is a good sign. Just taking out some of them is handy. And you know what? A really strong damage deal. I'm not going to buy this. Just because I'm still dead set on getting our uh, balloon solver here. And I believe that we can do it. But, um... The engineer has very solid popping power. And so... If you put him down and you get those sentry turrets... Very handy. In order to, uh... Deal a crap ton of damage. So if you put him near the village... Even better. Even better. Alright. So we've got solid defense up the back. Solid defense in the middle. And a pretty good start as well. Spreading out and getting as much damage in as it can. Very handy. Oh, here's our first Moab. Quincy's going to have to help us here because it's fortified. But we managed it quite nicely. Alright. So just thinking about what we should prioritize. I do still want to prioritize the balloon solver. It's on easy, so it is quite cheap to get. Only 19,000. Um, but we do still need to think about our next move. I do also love placing the village right in the middle because it means any regrow balloons that get there can't do anything and they're in the middle of the war zone. They are literally screwed. And honestly, look at it. Balloon Liquefier is such an underrated ability. Like, it doesn't do amazing damage to Moabs. 
But the ceramic balloons? It shreds. And that is just amazing. Could also get spiked mines. Spiked mines are okay. They're not the greatest upgrade in the world. If you're going for spike mines, you better be going for super mines. But, uh, they're decent. You know? Like, decent as in, like, the, uh, Moab press. I was gonna say domination. Not domination. Press. The Moab press. And then we've got ourselves the balloon solver on the way. How do we handle this? We handled it very well. Very nice. Okay. Okay. Alright. I might have to pause the game a little bit here, so I'll be back. It shouldn't... it won't take too long. Oh, well, actually, now that I think about it, we've basically got the balloon solver, so if I do have to go, I'll just leave the game running, and then I'll skip ahead to when I get back. Hopefully, I, it won't lead to my death. But there you go, we've got ourselves the balloon solver. It can see camo, it can pop leads, it can deal with purple balloons. Everything should be fine. Uh, and if I've got to go... I will. If not, I'll just keep on talking. But, uh, I might get a knock at the door at some point, in which case I will have to answer the call. Just like Overwatch. Man, I haven't played Overwatch in ages. I saw that it... I was playing, um... Oh, I don't remember. I think it was Black Ops Cold War, maybe? I was playing that, and, uh, my PlayStation told me Hey, we have, we've downloaded the latest update for Overwatch for you. And that just hit me with a wave of nostalgia like, damn, I haven't played that in a long time, you know? I don't remember the, when the last time I played Overwatch was. It was probably for an event, like a Halloween event. Halloween was my favorite event. Junkenstein's Revenge, the tower defense. Funny, huh? <laughs> That was literally my favourite event when we were like towers and defending, trying to protect uh, the rise and Drac. Nope, that's Black Ops 3. Eichenwald, that's it. When we were trying to protect Eichenwald. Man, that was fun. The only problem is I could never find anyone that wanted to do it on the really hard difficulties. Because there was, a, there, was a, there was like specific achievements for doing it on each difficulty and getting really far. Um, but no one wanted to play on the specific difficulty that I wanted. They just wanted to play on the easy one so they could get easy loot box. But uh, I ain't about that. I'm an achievement hunter, not a not a loot box collector. All right, but we seem to be doing well here. Even the Moab press is fairly decent. Like usually, I crap on the Moab press a lot, as well as just the 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 boomerang monkey in general. Uh, but top path is really good. Bottom path is pretty good, and middle path is also really good. So, overall, Boomerang Monkey is a decent tower. It's just it gets heavily outclassed if you've got something like the Ninja Alchemist combo, for example. Uh, so that's a shame, but it it's still decent. There's no reason to shove it under the bus completely. So let's get another monkey pirates up here, and then we'll even, th just like last time, we'll even set up backup abilities just in case we need it. Wall of fire on its own is also pretty handy. Oh, here it is. Alright, we're back. I just had to uh, do a bit of a taste test session, see if the pasta was cooked, because we are having spaghetti bowl tonight. If you don't know what that is, it's spaghetti bolognese. And if you don't know what that is, uh, think 
noodles with red sauce that tastes nice, that isn't tomato sauce. And you'll be in the ballpark. Alright. Get our dragon's breath. I was just trying I was just clicking on all of them being like, what was I doing? What was I doing? Oh yeah. Phoenix. Let's grab those, make it a little bit quicker for us. Uh, wait, are some of these fortified at the end? Is this that round? Maybe it was a different round. Either way, it wouldn't matter. We've got ourselves a summon phoenix. And honestly, we're looking pretty good at this point. The only thing I think we could do maybe better is to put down another spike factory. Or even an engineer monkey. But we're basically completed. Like, we've only got four rounds to go. Come on. Oh, I thought I could hook them both in time, but... I guess it gives me a little bit of cooldown on the ability. Wait, this is only 27,000? I could have sworn this was like a $50,000 upgrade at one point. Maybe they changed it because it's like a little bit trash. Who knows? I do not actively read the patch notes for fun, so I definitely wouldn't. Um... So, Sentry Expert's probably next on the agenda, but we've also got this in the bag, so it does not really matter all that much. There we go. Alright, round 70. Honestly, not much of a threat. It's just a bunch of Fortifieds, and there you go. The first two maps of the Fired Up Odyssey completed. We're looking pretty good. The only way I can see us having problems is on the last map. This could be a massive issue due to spacing. In fact, I don't know how this is going to work, but luckily we only have to go to 70. So it immediately rules out having to deal with ZOMGs and DDTs. Uh, Mesa will have one ZOMG and cracked we've got three DDTs but with a pirate lord we can solve that pretty quickly uh, we just need to make sure it's in range of the village so there you go there is part one of the fired up odyssey I hope this has helped you guys out I'll throw this in where I can oh my god yes I've been waiting to get that upgrade like yeah this this one's nice and all and it could lead for me doing races in the future but monkey farmers have larger radius this can make me s this look at look at my most used tower is it? Yeah. It's it's farms. When I'm getting all these, obviously except for chimps, I'm using farms. So it's it's the key to my heart right there, that upgrade. So anyway, I'm stalling. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next part will be out tomorrow as usual, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, guys.